This is the last chapter of the book Marine Insurance IC67 prepared by Institute of Insurance, Indian Institute of Insurance and this is for the examination of associateship etc. The, they have just touched upon the topics like loss prevention, reinsurance and maritime frauds. These three subjects are very vast basically. The, there is a books on reinsurance, there is an entire topic on reinsurance, but it is touched upon whenever you are looking at a marine insurance, the marine insurance claims, recovery, uh, and end of the day it is a reinsurance, is also a part of marine insurance. Maritime frauds, so a person from the marine cargo department should know about the different types of maritime frauds and also loss prevention techniques because maritime fraud starts from the underwriting first thing you know that you are looking for the single ton vessel, the age of vessel, the ownership profile of the vessel, classification, then uh, the, the, the financial capacity of the vessel owner, the charterer. So these are all the things you know which is, which is the uh, things which we are combating with the fraud. Then the loss prevention, loss ratio is more. So why losses are there? You see, many times the psychology and philosophy of the management is such. In one of the company, they were manufacturing a picture tube neck, neck in uh, Rajasthan. And one of the private insurance company appointed me for loss prevention because there were many losses. And then in the process of study, I realized that they are using these cartons again and again, again and again, maybe six times, seven times. And in the process of discussion, I was trying to tell them that this is having a fixed life. Over a period of time, corrugated cartons are, uh, the strength is reduced because of say humidity and usage, etc. The, the burst strength is reduced considerably. It will come down to 40%, 30% over a period of time. So they are not designed for using it again and again because it will not give the requisite strength. I was told by the party that they gave me you know, excellent uh, in a way cooperation. They have shown me everything. But the final briefing, they said, whatever you suggest, we are not going to accept it. Because in the, we have cut down the cost of every aspect on packaging, now we cannot incur any expenses. The best way is to change insurance company. You see, this is the philosophy. So loss prevention, when the premium is coming uh, less and less, the claim ratio is increased uh, in considerable uh, uh, in proportion. So you have to be very careful about the management philosophy, the broker's philosophy. That is very, very important. So what we are going to see, the various ways how the cargo loss can be prevented or controlled, what are the precautions we can take, there are, it's not very great this thing, but you take little care about the uh, loading, unloading, stowage, lashing, uh, the, uh, the desiccants provided in the container, etc. The losses can be arrested. Then we are also, there are various risks which is to be reinsured. The reinsurance is a part of insurance. Of course, as a uh, uh, the consignee or consigner, you may not have much concern. But there is a there are many consignees or consigners. They also look for the reinsurance and give support to the insurance companies. And then the third is maritime fraud. You should know different type of maritime fraud. Maritime fraud can be combated if you take certain precautions. The maritime frauds can be arrested. But then you see, you try to understand, whenever there is a greed, there is a fraud. Somebody is offering something at a very cheaper rate than the international market rate, there is a possibility of fraud. There is something which is offered in non-standard way, there is a possibility of fraud. So all these things to be understood by the participants, students, underwriters and adjusters. Cargo loss control and prevention. One, you are trying to minimize it and then you are trying to prevent it. So this is a systematic approach to reduce loss or damage.
to property with the purpose of minimizing losses. The premium is coming down. So loss ratio also should be under control. And the loss is often, often compensated by insurance. A reduction in overall level of loss leads to less waste for the entire community. The impossible to eliminate loss entirely because of damages inherent in cargo transportation, maritime perils must be risk of fire, flood are always present. You see, you cannot 100% eliminate. But if you take the proper precaution right from selection, right from good packaging, right from good stuffing, good dunaging, proper lashing, the selection of transport, no overloading of transport, you know, there are certain, the, there is a proper control uh, where it is going, a very costly cargo is going. So the smart locks may be escorting or may be taking police support. All these things, once you take care, you can always try to minimize the loss. Accidents sometimes cannot be avoided. But rollover can be avoided if you have seen the, if you are selecting a proper vehicle and then the center of gravity of the consignment is checked and then the uh, static rollover threshold and dynamic rollover threshold of the vehicle is calculated, the things can be uh, minimized. There are losses if you are selecting a brake, uh, for a brake bulk consignment, if you are selecting a dry bulk vessel, which is without any twin deck or between deck, because of superimposed weight, you cannot avoid the damages. What is happening in the uh, the, the, the project cargo. Project cargo is getting damaged because twin deckers are not available and then it is the dry bulk vessel is selected for carriage of these packages. It is also stuffed along with a different type of cargo or different type of projects or other brake bulk cargo. A mixed stowage, superimposed load, no proper dunaging, no proper lashing. There is every possibility if it is a bulk a dry bulk vessel, the mast of the vessel may not be having cargo securing uh, plants, cargo securing manuals. Then he may not be having, uh, the vessel may not be having experience, the chief officer and the, they may be knowing good about the bulk cargo. They may be knowing about the, uh, the spontaneous combustion. They may be knowing about the liquefaction of the vessel. And then they may be know, knowing about the minimizing the losses attributable to spontaneous combustion, liquefaction, etc. But they may not be equipped to combat with such type of, you know, lashing, uh, dunaging, etc. So these are all things, of course, they are depending on stevedore. But I have seen many losses when the consignment of brake bulk is coming by dry bulk vessel. The chances of losses to the bottom stack is unavoidable. So there has to be a systematic approach to reduce loss or damage to property with the purpose of minimizing losses. And the loss is often compensated by insurance company. A reduction in overall loss leads to a less waste for the entire community. As I said, yes, it is, a, it is not possible to eliminate at 100% confidence level, but the losses can be minimized. The precautions for theft, pilferage and non-delivery. This is new and well Constitute packaging, shrink wrapping, strapping and banding. So these are things, you know, which is uh, 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 trying to avoid the physical damages because of good packaging. So packaging attributed damages can be minimized. Uses of coding, code should be changed frequently. Clear and incomplete delivery and handling instruction should be three sides of the packaging. Many times I have seen, for example, a consignment of 200 liters drums. Now it is going to a place where they do not have any unloading facility. What they do? They put a uh, truck tire below the, uh, the hold of a truck, roll the drum and throw it on that or roll it on a plank or something like this. But then any, when you are throwing it on a tire, when it bounces and jumps and l l falls on a floor, then the chances of bungs opening damages are unavoidable. So the instructions should be clear, it should be 
written on the on the three sides of the packaging. Unitizing and palletizing will help. So you are not individually handling any packages, but there is a the pallet of say 30, 25, 40 cartons considering the size of carton on a pallet. So the entire pallet is again shrink wrapped uh, and then it can be lifted, shifted as a unit. So the handling of indi individual package is minimized in the process. Insist on prompt pickup and delivery. Yes, anything lying unnecessarily in the storage along with some other cargo and somebody is trying to put some heavy cargo on top of your pallets, your cargo and that can lead to the damages, that can lead to losses. So there are various precautions against handling and storage damages indicated. So insufficient or unsuitable packaging, marine insurer register claim arising out of insufficient or unsuitable packaging. So the selection of packaging, designing of packaging has to be proper. It should not exceed capacity of the box, bag or cart. So the, there is a burst strength of this. Then the, the, the loading capacity, the stack capacity, everything has to be checked. Consider how this will be handled, lifted in container or in a ship. Unitize, palletize or assemble goods. It is to largest practical unit consistent with handling weight and dimensions is required. So you have to consider the unitizing <coughs> which can be lifted, shifted. You should try to find out at destination what facilities they have. Suppose if they don't have facility of lifting a pallet in one unit, there will, there will be attempts to depalletize cargo of and unloading it. So all these things has to be seen at the time of when you decide a order uh, execution. So what is objective of good storage? It is optimum use of cargo space, the damage prevention to cargo, prompt and ready unloading with easy, easiest thing. So the stuffing in container or loading etc. in such a way that the weight distribution is there. It is the, there are no sharp objects. The precaution from condensation is also taken. The layout of cargo has to be given a due allowance to bottom storage and avoidance of space wastage considering the size of cartons. Now your size of carton should be such, there are you know pallet standardized European standards. We should have the pallets in such a way that once there are two pallets are loaded in the, in the truck or a container, there should not be a lot of gap. If at all there is a gap, it is to be properly supported by dunnage bags or dunnaging and then it should avoid the, the movement of that pa pallets and packages. Even distribution of weight of cargo. Because if it is not even distribution, there will be unnecessarily undue stress on the vehicle or container and it can lead to certain rollover problems or certain problems. So bulk cargo, uh, even distribution, even in bulk cargo, that is about the shipments. The, uh, the loading by draft marks, you see the uh, per hold capacity and you, it, it is to be distributed in such a way. So there is an even distribution of the cargo. For bulk cargo, there are a lot of precautions to be taken uh, to avoid liquefaction, spontaneous combustion, evaporation, clingage and sort of inherent uh, losses attributable to inherent nature of the cargo. So proper placement of cargo, you know, you should be giving instructions to the vessel owner that this is a heat susceptible damage and it must be, it must be stored away from engine room or if there has to be a coffer dam in between a cargo hold and uh, engine room, it is a void compartment. So there will not be transfer of heat easily. Storage plan, you know, enables the master of the vessel to understand location of various types of cargo where it is stored. Of course, the vessel owner, the vessel master and the chief officer, the cargo mate takes care of loading of cargo in, uh, in a proper way, lashing of cargo, damaging of cargo. If it is a, uh, say, brake bulk vessel, they have the cargo securing manual. For containers also, they do have cargo, the container securing manuals, etc. They have proper hardware for securing uh, things. 
So this is very important that even it is not only the ship owner and the, the carriers also take due uh, care in the carriage of cargo, in securing of cargo, whenever it is their prerogative. The damages to the cargo, this could be because of rainwater ingress in the vehicle or in a container which is having breaches, breach in uh, integrity. The humidity losses which is leading to condensation. Maybe there is a seawater uh, damage uh, if the tank top uh, of the vessel is having uh, water ingress or some problem in the vessel. Uh, it can have the uh, seawater ingress. It can reduce cargo into a, a ruin or soggy, stained, mild dude, rusty or delabeled merchandise. The water damage, yes, the cargo surveyors, they try to check by silver nitrate test whether it is a seawater damage or a fresh water damage. Condensation damage are also, it is very easy to find out in containers. So, apply preservatives, corrosion inhibitors or waterproof wrapping and provide desiccants. Desiccants is the moisture absorbent, silica gel, etc. There are a couple of uh, other types of also desiccants provided. But considering the number of days journey, if it is, it is like this, they say, no, we had 30 desiccant bags already placed in the container. But that 30 bags are designed for 20 days. So, you have to find out what is going to be a journey. Do you sufficient factor of safety for delays, etc. There was somebody who was trying to tell me there is a consignment of chili, red chilies. They were delayed whatsoever reason for 20, 25 days. The all desiccant bags were saturated with moisture and the entire consignment was rejected because of water lock or the condensation damages. Because these commodities, they do have their own moisture. So, there is a moisture, inherent moisture in them. So, there is a cargo rinse or a cargo condensation, the packaging condensation because of uh, if the wooden pallets are not seasoned wood and there is a container condensation. So, these are things can be avoided with a proper precaution. There is a methods of stuffing, providing lining and then the uh, ventilator taping, desiccant bags. There are a couple of uh, precautions to be taken. The protection from top and sides. The maximum possible problem is from the top and from the sides when the condensation is there. So, it has to be taken care by craft paper lining and there are a couple of things we can take it. Provide adequate skids, pallets or dunnage to keep cargo above collecting drainage. So, you have to see, see to it that the, uh, the, the drainage, the, the cargo is it's not very close to the drainage or the rainwater drainage, etc. And then the leakage is avoidable. The uh, all these things, you know. So adequate skids that it is not uh, sitting on the ground. So during certain floods or certain leakage, they will be susceptible to damages. So certain precautions in storage has to be maintained. You see, there is a multimodal transport concept. The, the, the container will go on sea container will go on roads. So, there are development of various types of container. The container is for a over dimensional cargo flat track or it could be a liquid bulk tank container, it could be a dry bulk container, it could be a flexi tank container, it could be a refrigerated container, it could be a totally 20 feet or 40 feet box container. So, there are different types of container for containerized cargo. So, there has to be a proper selection of the container considering the nature of the cargo. There is a general feeling people are trying to compare that containerized cargo and all cargo, which is non-containerized cargo. But you try to see the damages that pink color is, uh, is for all cargo, red color graph, which is for containerized cargo. Condensation damages are more in all cargo. The temperature related damages are more in con containerized cargo. The infestation, infestation damages are less in container whereas it is more in all, all cargo. Sinking is more in containers. The loss of containers are much more than sinking of the vessels. The loss overboard, falling overboard, it is more in containers, less in all cargo. 
physical damages are more in containerized less in uh, percentage you can work it out i am not talking of the percentage all cargo then the shortage claim is more or less same in both the theft is more in containerized cargo because it is difficult to find out at the destination only you will come to know that there are problems so shortage claims theft claims are more in containerized cargo the weight damages are more in all cargo and less in containerized cargo so you try to compare you know when you, somebody will say that no no containers are the best no it is not like that uh, there are pros and cons for both so you should understand there are various reasons for containerized cargo getting damaged it is a lack of export packaging packaging is not good it's a project cargo it is not packed properly it is only a flimsy one time packaging it is increased use of weak retail packaging inadequate ventilation provided the wrong choice of container it is poor condition of container the containers are not checked properly there are breaches there are cracks there are mi minor micro holes the water can gain entry during heavy rains so lap, lack of effective container interchange and inspection the ineffective sealing arrangements the seals can be tampered seals can be duplicated seals can be opened without serious problem so there is a very skillful pilferage from container is possible the lack of clear carriage instructions there is no instruction for properly given ineffective internal cleaning the internal cleaning also can lead to the problems the contaminated floors tented floors there could be insects there could be fungus there could be certain damages attributed to cont uh, contaminated floors the wrong temperature setting in refrigerated containers you are telling something and something is else is fixed then there are condensation damages because of variation in temperature the container overloading is slightly difficult but then the container with load is kept on a trailer the trailer is overloaded people are disregarding the weight of container this mistake many people are doing they check the weight of cargo but they don't check the weight of container when i am selecting a trailer so these mistakes many people do it or maybe they are knowing and they are trying to save uh, freight the concept of reinsurance i was in uh, indian navy taking training maybe in 68 or 69 the base commander of ins angre he was command commander mahendranath mulla he became captain during in 71 war he was a captain of kukri and then he has uh, he refused to abandon when the kukri was torpedoed so i know commander mahendranath mulla he was our base commander came to our school where i was taking training and he said i came to know the trainees are playing matka matka is one type of gambling you know we are putting money on numbers and then if that number is taken out you get the uh, some nine times or some time, some money so he said it is if you want to earn out of a gambling you be a bookie the punter never wins you know it has embedded in my mind in such a way i stopped playing cards also after that uh, so let us see how the things are going there is a small bookie everywhere you know he accepts bets he makes payment all by himself all you need to start off as a bookie is the ability to pay to the winners uh, among the numbers once the amount exceeds your capacity you turn the bet over to the say for example 1 0 to 9 or 1 to 9 whatever numbers are there then when i feel that the maximum booking is on one particular number only and if that number comes out i'll have to pay i'll have to shell out lot of money then that bookie puts the amount to same number to the higher ups and higher ups and higher ups end of day the person who is taking out numbers he is aware that which is having the maximum booking on a number that number is never taken out okay so more or less as the at the top of heap sits one man let's take the ipl final as an example he knows how much amount is riding on mumbai and how much on chennai 
ही नोज कौन सा पलडा भारी है ही रियलाइज दिस दैट इफ चेन्नई विंस व्हेन देन ही हैज टू पे आउट मोर इफ मुंबई विंस ही हैज टू पे लेस ही विल मेक श्योर मुंबई विंस दिस इज द स्टोरी व्हाट आई हैव हर्ड इफ यू आस्क मी टू प्रूव इट इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट but this is the grape wine or this is the uh, percolated things maybe there are couple of cricket players they were caught in the so the reinsurance you know it is going on the principle something like this that whatever i insure it it is reinsured to minimize my losses so what is reinsurance in simple terms reinsurance is a insurance for insurance companies it is a means by which an insurance company can protect itself from the risk the company who request for the cover is called the cedent and the reinsurer is called the ceded okay so these these are the words you know why i am underlined it because these in examination on a multiple choice question they may have these questions so why reinsurance risk transfer greater individual risk than its size we are transferring it is is a concentrated risk for example satellites or such type of things you know so it is a the offer higher limits of protection to the policy holder the income smoothing it is absorbing larger losses catastrophic losses larger losses because of reinsurance you know it will give the cushion surplus relief the solvency margin is maintained it helps to maintain solvency margin arbitrage price differential between two or more markets the reinsurance expertise is required manageable and profitable portfolio has to be checked managing cost of capital has to be checked and capital in terms of reinsurance so these are the you know there are many benefits to the insurance company by again reinsuring the uh, cargo so if at all there is a heavy damages it is taken your losses are minimized I have seen in Africa one of the country. Uh, it was hundred percent they were reinsuring it, and the reinsurers they used to give him fifteen percent what they call brokerage or something like that. So they were managing the entire show with the brokerage and whatever losses are there, they used to get it from the reinsurers. Uh, these these are the concepts. There are a lot of things. This is not a total subject on totality on reinsurance. We are just touching upon the basic principles of. reinsurance how reinsurance works so the green mark is say it is middle uh, persons and uh, red is risk takers so insurance policy holders the brokers they approach the insurance companies maybe through agents also possible the insurance companies will accept the risk and then considering the uh, the risk heavy risk it will be reinsurance and then there are reinsurance intermediaries or there are broker they are also acting as a reinsurance broker so then it is reinsured with the reinsurance companies in india gic is there and couple of reinsurance companies are there uh, which we should know so in general there are only two types of reinsurance one is facultative it is something like specific you know if you have a problem you go to the reinsurer and one is a treaty it is something like a uh, policy which whatever you are uh, telling to it is a treaty with that uh, reinsurance companies and whatever you are trying to uh, uh, put it as a reinsurance it is accepted each type of reinsurance can be structured in one of the following two ways it is proportional and it is non proportional so these are the methods of you know uh, reinsurance uh, acceptance and try to understand about the facultative reinsurance so facultative reinsurance applies to an individual risk that is a commercial one commercial fire policy or even only one location or whenever it is spill over or the treaty and i am trying to search a reinsurer so it will be placed in facultative reinsurance the insurer and reinsurer agree to the reinsurance terms of an individual agreement this is not a like open policy it is not like open cover it is not like self turnover policy where 
terms and conditions are agreed upon but more or less this can be compared as a specific voyage so every uh, uh, voyage which i am placing with the reinsurer the terms and condition will be agreed upon it is generally used to reinsurance of course the extra hazardous or unusual risk which might be excluded from treaty insurance agreements there is every possibility the certain extra hazardous material certain unusual risk the insurance company the reinsurance company may not accept that in the treaty and then it is going for a facultative reinsurance high valued risk with policy limits exceeding maximum treaty uh, parameters so so these are the parameters which has to be checked treaty reinsurance so this treaty reinsurance applies to insurance company entire book of business so this include all commercial fire policies all automobile policies all worker compensation policies all home owners policies or more generally any combination of the above so this is the treaty you know already i have agreement with the reinsurer treaty reinsurance is the one in which both pro data and excess of loss forms are used so proportional reinsurance what is proportional one or more reinsurer takes a stated percent share of each policy that an insurer produces 50% 20% 30% something like that the reinsurance will receive the stated percentage of each dollar of premium and will pay that percentage of each dollar of losses so this is in the terms of percentage example surplus share reinsurer assumes pro rata responsibility for only that portion of any risk which exceeds the company's established retentions level okay so that is known as a surplus share the reinsurer assumes the pro rata responsibility for only that portion of any risk which exceeds the company's established retention level there is a non proportional reinsurer this reinsurer responds when the loss suffered by the insurer exceeds a certain amount okay example the insurer is prepared to accept a loss of 1 million dollar for any loss which may occur and they purchase a layer of reinsurance of 4 million in excess of 1 million dollar if a loss of 3 million dollar occurs then the insurer will retain 1 million and will recover 2 million from the reinsurance if in this example the reinsured will retain any loss exceeding in this about dollar 5 million dollars unless they have purchased a further excess layer second layer offset 10 uh, again 1 uh, 10 million excess of 5 million so it is something like that you know it is a non proportional reinsurance they will definitely ask question on retrocession so reinsurance the reinsurance companies the reinsurance seller is retro uh, retrocessionaries the reinsurance buyer is a retrocedent so these are these are the terminology definitely there would be one question on this uh, this particular reinsurance so ways of reinsurance is a pooled reinsurance there is a recipro uh, reciprocity reinsurance subsidies subsidized reinsurance so there are many as so there are couple of uh, reinsurance companies prominently known is gic re it is a compulsory uh, reinsurance initially with the gic re then there is a munich then there is a swiss re then there is a hanover re so there are couple of reinsurance companies uh, the person who is taking care of reinsurance department must be having the list of the reinsurance and the conditions of treaty and facultative insurance so general insurance corporation gic re is the sole domestic reinsurance company of india the gic re is having triple a plus rating 
This was incorporated, GIC was incorporated on 22nd November 1972. It, the subsidiaries companies of GIC were National Insurance Company, New India, Oriental, United. Okay. GIC Asset Management to manage GIC Mutual Funds, GIC, GIC Housing Finance and GIC Export Credit Guarantee Corporation. The business of GIC, the domestic reinsurance business, 73% of the revenues GIC plus Hanover deal with 60-40 life insurance, international reinsurance business is 27% of the re revenues, investment and fund management is also part of business of GIC. What are the reinsurance regulation of India idea? 20% of each policy with reinsurance company. It is an intercompany cessation between four public sector companies. First GIC and then international companies. Insurance company to inform before 45 days. Not more than 10% of reinsurance premium to be placed with one reinsurer. No reinsurer will have rating of less than triple B from standard uh, and poor. So there are many challenges for reinsurance industry in the Indian market. The covers are not available for liability, professional indemnities, financial risk, oil and energy etc. Even vessels coming from Iran were having problem for reinsurance. Uh, of course, that was sorted out by the government of India. The international companies don't quote for small ticket deals. They want bigger, not smaller one. Premium rates are costlier as foreign competitors quote more. Desirable quotes from the Indian market are not available with the promptitude. The difference dates of finalization of accounts globally. The reinsurance cover for terrorist attacks is still a debate. You see, it is like this. Well, our premium rating is coming down to very low rates. Naturally, when you are going for reinsurance, and if their rates are higher, they are asking for the higher premium, etc. Definitely, it is not economical for anybody. So, the earlier there were no issues with the uh, reinsurance, but with the reduction in premium, it becomes difficult to get reinsurance. Many times the consigner, the exporter or importer, he is arranging the uh, reinsurer for that their particular products. But then these are the challenges because the rates. So cargo reinsurance, marine you can say like open covers. Underwriters automatically accepts from the assured all his shipments coming with the scope of the open cover up to an agreed amount per vessel conveyance. So there is a per sending limit. There is per bottom limit, there is per location limit and there is an overall, you know, say for example, ten, the overall uh, uh, the turnover or the amount insured is 10,000 crore rupees or something like this. How treaty of reinsurance arrangements, it is not possible for an underwriter with a general cargo account to protect himself against the unduly heavy commitments of any particular vessel by means of facultative reinsurance alone. It is very difficult because you know, uh, if the one vessel is having concentrated cargo on that, or one vessel is costing say more than say 100 crore, there was a vessel which came with 100 crore of rupees and then there were damages in that. So naturally, the damages are then phenomenal when such type of thing is happening. So there is a quota share arrangements and non-proportional reinsurance. So in quota share, maybe resorted to specially when there is a need to create reciprocal treaties. This is a non-proportional, it is an excess of loss treaty under which the seeding company bears all claims arising out of due to one disaster or occurrences up to a specified amount only. So there are various ways and methods. Uh, reinsurance is a subject in itself. It is not only few slides of few chapter. To have the understanding, maybe when you are appearing for examination, you should be taking reinsurance as one of the subject, the risk, uh, the cargo risk management as one of the subject. So this is that will give you 
the better and in-depth knowledge of the reinsurance. Every person is not in reinsurance department. So many people, they don't look at this uh, as a, you know, uh, requirement from the company side. Hull and machinery, it is also reinsured because, you know, it's a, the, the, the larger the vessel, the cost of vessel is much more. So underwriters have greater control as each vessel in a fleet is evaluated separately and not under open cover. So you will have condition and valuation report of every vessel. So somebody is having a fleet of 100 vessel, the valuation of each vessel is carried out and it is available for the purpose of insurance and of course for the purpose of reinsurance. They are in line with, in a way, they are in line with international market and costing of the hull and machinery. So demand for reinsurance on facultative basis is confirmed mainly for limited conditions usually to total loss only. So, yeah, some, it is not a treaty, it is a facultative, I am just going for one particular vessel. Then they will say we will reinsure not for the comprehensive cover, not for the particular average, but we will restrict only to the total loss of that particular vessel. So these are various conditions uh, for the reinsurance when it comes to hull and machinery. Maritime frauds. I have come across a couple of maritime fraud where vessels were scuttled and then uh, the vessels run away with the cargo. There are various methods of maritime fraud, documentary frauds. I have come across, I have come across. So def what is the definition of maritime fraud occurs when one of the parties involved in an international trade transaction like the buyer, how, how many people, many people are there in that in, that, in trade. Buyer, seller, ship owner, charterer, ship's master, crew, insurer, banker, broker, agent, surveyors. They illegally secures money or goods from another party to whom, on the face of it, he has undertaken specific trade, transport and financial obligations. Development, earlier maritime fraud was only at the parochial level. But currently, it has come to the international level. Asia and the Indian subcontinent are the worst affected of this maritime frauds. You see, theft and pilferage from the docks. Even it is, the customs should be involved, the police should be involved, clearing agent is involved, maybe concerned the transporter is involved. There is every possibility the attending, uh, the loss superintendent, the loss uh, surveyors, those who are carrying out, cargo unloading and delivery supervision, the people from the surveyor from these companies are also probably involved in the theft and pilferage from the ports and docks, etc. These are all part of maritime frauds. There are two organizations they are combating with the fraud, ICC International Maritime Bureau, the other is Far East Regional Investigation Team known as a ferret. The ferret is of Salvage Association and it is International Chamber of Commerce. They have the IMB, International Maritime Bureau. They are the apex bodies in the international uh, world to combat with the maritime fraud. I suggest to the participant that the best is ICC, IMB. If, have, if you come across any maritime fraud, you want further investigation, the best is to contact ICC, uh, I am B. There are various types of maritime frauds. It starts with the documentary frauds, the fake documents are created and there is no actual transaction of cargo. Scuttling of vessels. The scuttling means making deliberate hole on the vessel. The, the side round holes or on the olden ships, not non-air conditioned warships. We used to call them side scuttles. So they are for the ventilation. Then there are dead light. That means no light will come. Then there are glass uh, uh, round closer for the, the uh, air will not come, but the light will come. So they were known as the side scuttles. From the, that is a that is a round shaped window you can say on a vessel with three facilities: totally open, open for light and totally close for the air, uh, light, everything. 
these are the deliberate you put the explosive or op open the sea walls and start taking water inside and water the vessel sinks the phantom ship is also known as a paint brush piracy and this phantom ship takes the cargo changes his identity and runs away then there is a piracy of course there are certain places the pirates are boarding vessel and they are trying to take ransom they are not interested in cargo what they will do in somalia with the cargo if it is uh, say the pvc or something like that or a pta what they will do with this cargo in the crude oil what they will do with the crude oil yeah if it is edible oil i can understand they are interested they will take the edible oil and sell it but then the best is take the ransom and leave the uh, vessel cargo thefts on highways cargo thefts on ports cargo thefts from port to cfs by drivers so these are also part of maritime fraud in connected with the charters charters is taking booking and then runs away uh, he takes partly payment and the vessel owner has to complete there are not all but then try to understand if at all there is a maritime fraud 90% of the cases claim will be lodged with the insurance company there are a couple of maritime frauds like bunkering fraud the false uh, or wrong uh, flow meter readings the, the water mixed port related frauds the blackmail frauds blackmail to the owner of the vessel the cyber related frauds fake job advertisements information phishing these are not directly connected with the insurance companies but these are the frauds where the maritime this is this is a part of maritime fraud and then the vessel owners or the people are suffering from these type of maritime frauds the documentary frauds these the, the bill of lading is issued but cargo is not loaded on board the, it is a fake bill of lading he will also stamp it with shipped on board etc the vessel is planned for scuttling now in such cases what you have to see that whether vessel goods were carted whether so much of goods are available in that particular country or uh, the, is there any loading supervision uh, anybody has seen is the port documents are there to prove that yes cargo was lying and cargo was loaded in this particular vessel so you have to see many thing many time what they will do they may load it at anchor they will show loading at anchor there are various methods to show that one but with the latest scenario the tracking of vessel uh, things have become less but then this is one possibility that there could be a fake documents the advance bills of lading and shut out of cargo so bills of lading is basically in advance it is prepared and then i do not have capacity whatsoever reason because i want to take more diesel i want to take more fresh water uh, with the next port and i cannot take so much of cargo so even after issuing advance bills of lading which is considered as a fraud the cargo will not be loaded on board it is shut out but having issued the bill of lading there will be a short landing certificate issued at destination and there would be a claim lodged with the insurance company a wrong or bogus loss overboard certificate issued i was investigating one of the lob case at jamnagar and i came to know a very big corporate names are there i came to know from one of the stevedore in uh, jamnagar who was known to me and he said that vessel agents in jamnagar they are discussing with the exporters from india and they are telling that if you load cargo on my vessel i will give you 500 bags or 1000 bags loss overboard certificate free now is just just try to understand this is also a bogus it is also a maritime fraud with inside information fake bill is submitted to clear cargo promptly so i i know what is the uh, thing and somebody from shipping company is involved and then he the fake bill is submitted to clear cargo the cargo sold ex jetties on fake documents the fake documents are created submitted and, and before actual cargo interest arrives the cargo is cleared from the cross deliveries taking my taking a cargo with higher weight so these are all 
pretty pilferage from the port. So deliberate overstatement of cargo ladder. This is also and then naturally it will be shortly and short unloaded. It will it will be claim for the shortage. The Trojan container that is the container is having a spurious cargo. I have loaded something else and something else comes out of it. Stones are there. I have put yarn in that but there are stones coming out. I have put the uh, pharmaceutical intermediates and then there is a maize powder which I found, maize flour, what I found with the consignment. So it is a mis discreation, mis description of the cargo ladder. That is also uh, part of maritime fraud. Say so for example, uh, for the uh, sandalwood thefts and pilferage, invariably somebody from Dubai market or somebody from the uh, some particular port, they will book a order for insignificant value atoms. Uh, say for example, for the poultry farm, the, the water pots, plastic one. And for 4 5 lakhs rupees, he will give an order. He will pay in advance. He will say that I will send container to your premises. And then everybody is rigged in the process. And then when the container comes out, it, the sandalwood is loaded somewhere. The original consignment, either it is sold or maybe the uh, seller is also involved in such type of fraud that he in fact is not loading. He comes and then he is showing that as if or, or he is creating the photographic evidence and he can also put up a claim with the insurance company for theft and filferage. But then sandalwood which is export, this is having this type of uh, modus operandi. How this side scuttle looks, you know, they are not shown the deadlight, but then it is in three parts. Uh, there is one deadlight, so it covers everything. So what is the features of scuttling? If, if at all you come across or if you suspect that there is a scuttling of vessel, then you should see that vessel should be 15 years or older. It is a single owner or single ton. It is a small size, BLCC, ULCC, Panamax, Aframax. Nobody is going to scuttle. Shipping Corporation, Merck's line, Nippon lines, nobody is going to scuttle. American person, no. Single ton, single owner, small size, 7,000 to 10,000 gross tonnage. Registered in tax seven countries. It is not registered with the same own country. Somewhere else. Naturally, it will have flag of convenience. And yes, Asian origin crew. 99% Americans or the, the Britishers, they are not involved, their crews are not involved uh, in this type of, but then you will find majority in such things either from Philippines or the Indians, the Pakistani, from Bangladesh, Sri Lankans, uh, these type, these crews are uh, uh, normally found. This is the what the pundits in the maritime fraud they say. The next is phantom ship or truck. It is also a pen brush piracy, what they call it. The vessel is again that features are there. It is you know uh, single ton, single owner, etc. But then this is the organized gang, those are operating. The vessel is operating on a fake certificates. The cargo is loaded and vessel never reaches her designated destination. She runs away. Earlier in 83 clauses, these such type of losses were not covered under the policy. But in 2009 clauses, institute cargo clauses, there is a special thing that if the, there is no privities of this uh, consignee to this, then it is paid, it is covered under the policy. So now earlier there was uh, very strictly they were repudiated, now as a piracy claims are not repudiated as per ICC 2009 clauses. The vessel cannot be traced as identity is immediately changed. The name is changed, there are many sister ships, you know, operating. So it look like the other one, but then the ownership is changed, the documents are changed. So this is all organized gangs they are operating. And the cargo is 99% sold in warlord country. Earlier, lot of cargo claims were there, but then Sri Lanka where the Tamil Tigers were operating, that was the place. Uh, I, I was told that uh, their leader, Mr. Prabhakaran from London was involved in this type of thing. It is every possibility when there is a leadership is military. Uh, the military dictator would be interested to unload cargo, sell it, get the money and put it in Switzerland bank. Because he is aware that one day he has to run away and he should have a lot of money uh, 
by any type of source if it is he can make money it is welcome by him the international chamber of commerce international maritime bureau they have the publication of weekly piracy report very very uh, exhaustive report not only piracy but even smaller thefts in small ports what is happening at tutikori in sri lanka mumbai port everything is discussed in the piracy report of icc imd the pirates are again classified into low life pirates the low life pirates are they want a wrist watch but they will cut my hand they want money from my pockets they will kill me so there are low life pirates then there are sophisticated organized gangs then the warlords are involved in piracy warlords i just said that military dictators so they are involved some vessel is going okay loot it you know and then uh, unload in such a way uh, carry ammunition there are many methods that warlords are involved in this maritime frauds now there is a icc imb is having installation of sea jack alarms on the ship they have excellent contacts with the coast guard and governments and then if at all there is a piracy there somebody is boarding and when the sea jack alarm it is placed at multiple places on ship when it is placed the nearby coast guard will also the icc imb london office is manned for 24 hours they will definitely take cognizance of alarm and then they will ask nearby countries to in try to intercept and try to save the venture so this is the about the places prominent you know somalia it is a fair state that clearly is unable to react the gulf of aden a shipping choke point uh, bound by failed state somalia and a notorious uh, haven of terrorist aden the historical lessons are would suggest that this situation is disastrous for shipping events proving so why the middle east is important because oil and there is no choice so that is the point you know where vessels are moving in that area there is a uh, chance of any uh, of course malacca strait is also there at nigeria it is also there you can see see there are various places you know somewhere near nigeria in indian ocean from uh, gulf of aden uh, the malacca strait middle east even near nigeria there are way of this thing so these are the piracy there are certain precautions to be taken by uh, insurance companies vessel owner and consignee consigner if you feel that it is a doubtful thing our warships our war ladies are placed in these areas to you know escort our vessels all all nations that said pakistan royal navy french navy warships are placed for uh, supporting so who can take precaution exporter and importer everything available at less price will may yield to the uh, losses in future okay ek hamara in hindi there is one proverb that sasta roye bar bar mehanga roye ek bar embassy and chamber of commerce the freight forwarders they are aware of it you know how many uh, war are involved what is happening in the port etc the banks can take precaution the insurance companies can take precaution vessel owner and charters can take precautions port authority can take precautions to minimize thefts pilferage and uh, losses by maritime frauds in the process of adjustment call full, full set of documents request inspection and survey arrange cargo supervision and super cargo what is super cargo the person will go along with the vessel okay baby, but but then if the gangster is involved his life is at stake uh, obtain status report of the consigner consignee the vessel owner etc single ton award it you know when you have very uh, precious cargo going it should go with a proper vessel owners only obtain status report performance bank bond from the banks vessel should have capacity to carry cargo that particular type of cargo so there are certain uh, precautions which can be taken so this is the end of chapter number 12 thank you very much what we have seen is the loss control prevention of cargo losses we have seen the reinsurance of marine risk we have seen the different type of maritime fraud 
and this is the end of my lecture my session if you have any doubts about any of the chapter any of the problems you can always contact me at my phone number phone number you will have to find it out i am not giving here because you will have to find out contact any uh, uh, say mumbai mctd ho or cargo underwriters college of insurance national insurance academy you will definitely get my telephone numbers thank you very much all the best for the examination and all the best in marine department thank you very much